Hello and welcome! Today I have nothing to show you, but you may ask yourself why am I putting up a video then? The reason is because I have done optimization. I have done a lot of optimization in my code, about 60 hours I went down this week. And I'll be going through all the details and the learning experience I have had during this week. First I will go through the different ways of dividing code between different frames. One way is using core routines. Proves it it's easy to work with. It divides the code between frames. The negative is that it only runs in the main thread. Threads, separate threads, is good because you create one thread for each object and you can prioritize them and so on. The negative one, it's a lot of overhead when you create them and uh, this is a problem. I did use Unity Thread Helper. It was quite nice, but the weight didn't wait, and the thread safe didn't work as I was uh, I thought it would. So I had some problems with that. But most probably the Unity Thread Helper problem is regarding to is related to me. Thread pools, which I'm currently using, is efficient, easy to use, and the bad side is there is no prioritization. You cannot really say this task is more important than this task. So you have to use a load handler to load in stuff to the thread pool as you like them to be run. If you're doing anything that is really, really heavy, then you can use compute shaders. Then you use the GPU instead of the CPU. I haven't used this, but I know there is out there, so it's good to know for you. Some other interesting facts. There is 25 threads per process and a good thread count is 2 times number of cores. So you have, if you have a quad core you should have 8 threads running. Another problem I had was heap size. If you are doing any optimization you will also be working with a lot of data sometimes. And the heap in Unity is 900 megabyte, I've heard. But in C Sharp, I found some documentation on 1500 megabytes. So I don't really know if it's 900 or 1500 for the 32-bit system. In the C Sharp documentation, I found that X, uh, if you're running a 64-bit system, you can use a lot uh, larger heap and it's quite logic if you think about addressing. So to optimize you need to know when things take time and what takes time. To do that you should use the profiler. It doesn't work with 64-bit builds. So if you are building and using the profiler to autoconnect, use 32-bit builds. And you will see some spikes, render texture set active. These are spikes from the editor, so you can just disregard them because when you have the final build, the player won't really see them. The render texture is the profiler moving, you can see the set active. This is uh, from a bug that was existing in the previous version. So set active is used to like update the profiler so it jumps instead of slowing down the complete editor. Unity uses threads and this might cause some spikes in your code since some part of your code is waiting for some other thread to complete and uh, for example you should use new wait callback on every function you're putting in into a thread pool and also you could disactivate this feature I believe it was inserted to unity at 3.5 by using player setting dot empty render under unit editor and this is some topic you will have to search on the internet to how to fix. Use profiler scripts like begin sample and end sample. This helps you to find exactly where something is taking up CPU time and also memory. Thread exceptions might happen but they are not thrown to the editor. They are eaten up in the thread and never returned. This is good to know because otherwise you will be wondering what happened to my error. And this is a problem I have run into sometimes. Quite annoying. The editor crashes a lot of time. So a good tip when doing threading is to get a SSD disk. I have a laptop. It takes about 20 seconds to start unit editor. But using an SSD disk it takes about 1 to 2 seconds. 
So if I would have to wait every time the unit editor crash for 20 seconds, I would probably have gone crazy. A lot of hours would have been spent just waiting for the editor to start, about 20 I believe. If you decide to thread your project, do it one piece at a time and keep the old piece so you can check if the new code is the problem or if the thread is the problem or where the problem really is because if you don't have the old code you cannot really switch back and forth between thread world and unthreaded world it's really nice to do use some type of version control git, dropbox or anything like that. Oh, I know Dropbox is not version control, but you have a backup system there. You can al always go back to previous versions. It's quite nice. One important thing regarding resources like lists or functions or anything like that is to thread safe them. There are different types of thread safe. You can have locks, you can have uh, read write locks, and so on. Look into that and it's really important. For example, if you have a list and first the first thread goes there and tries to add the object, it will first add another node on the list and then it will add its own uh, number it's trying to put in. If you're doing this with two threads, the first thread goes there and uh, adds another node and then if another thread comes in between and tries to add a new object, it will add another point to this, so you have two steps. And then the f second thread will add his number into that point, and then the first thread will add a number on top of that. So you will end up with a point in the list where it's just the default value. This is really bad. So think about thread synchronization. And you will be reading a lot on MSDN's documentation for C Sharp. It was really helpful for me. So go there and check out everything that's stated there. There's a lot of information and most time if you just read it, you will do it right the first time. I hope this will help someone out there. I know if I had found this clip and... Uh, would have watched it, I would probably have saved about 40 hours during my 60 hours week. There are a lot of problems with threading, but there is a lot of reward to be found also. My world went from generating completely around the player in about a minute to generating about around the player completely in about 15 seconds. And the frame rate went up from about 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second. So there is a lot of optimization to find be found. And there are also some spikes you will have in your code if you're running it in the main thread. So you will also see some glitches which is not existing anymore. So if you need to do anything really heavy work on all the CPUs, use threads. If you don't use threads, only the Unity built-in stuff will use the other cores and you will be left with only one core in the main thread. So use threads if you need to. Hope this has helped someone and uh, good luck to you and thank you for watching.